Hello, I'm Captain Vile. Welcome back to Goofy Practice of Sorcery. It's called that because every episode where my character talks, I have to read it in Goofy's voice. And unknowingly have cursed myself to have to repeat that every time in case someone comments, Hey, why is it called Goofy since Goofy's not here? So, oh well, I'll have to know for next time. Next time I do like a themed series, whatever. Emerging and blinking into the sunshine, you find yourself near a tall statue, beyond which is a wider plaza. At the foot of the statue is a drinking fountain. You take a deep draught of cool, crisp water and feel quite refreshed, which is why we have 20 stamina. The plaza? Outwards from the artist's quarter. This paved clearing, perhaps intended for visitors to the market to tie up their horses, if, uh, what if any have, then it would seem their horses have been stolen. All around the slum, house rise tall, squats piled on squats, in that emanating a thick, terrible smell. There are not many creatures about. The road continues between the slums, heading up a low rise, and the side alley leads left. Uh, left. We don't need to eat, we have full stamina. The left, a narrow road which uh, leads deep in a slum distinct. District. Dis. Sorry. District. Excuse me. I just got home. I'm tired from school, I guess. Uh, but its lanes are slung with decoration and ragged bunting. Right. The main road turns right. Here, continues up a rise towards a, s a run of slightly grander buildings, ivy and gripweed hanging from bent metal railings. The whole place seems empty, dark and deserted and dark. Suddenly, out of almost invisible narrow alleyway, a figure no higher than your knee dashes and collides with you, sending you sprawling, then cry for an apology as they head down the street. Check, what did they steal? They didn't steal anything? Did I have one gold when I got out? Nobles are hiding somewhere. Uh, there's a pool of water there. Go down this way. Now, you make your way along the clifftop road between grand houses that must belong to well-do types. You pass a tall, thin man in a robe. Some kind of monk. He bows to you as you pass. Uh, oh, greetings. Yep. The monk beams at you, holding out his palms. Uh, shake his hand. You reach out and take hold of his hands. With burning bright eyes, he stares at you. You must find the crown, he murmurs. For the sake of all, God. And suddenly, he releases you and straightens up, folding his hands away into his robe. You can't help noticing you feel strangely refreshed. Who are you? Yep. But the monk only shakes his head and gestures to his mouth. Now that you look closely, you see his tongue has been cut off and he cannot speak. He bows his head and walks away. Uh, it was a weird experience, but okie dokie. You continue up the main road which climbs gently towards the center of Kare. The road passes through ruin of grand buildings. In what must have been a, a glorious morning room. Oriental pond is all that remains. Moss grows in the cracks inside. Take a closer look at the pond. I suppose there's fish. Uh, you walk over to the pond. Despite its great age, it seems well tended, and the water is surprisingly clear. A small scarlet fish darts out. Uh... Darts out from behind a stone as you watch. Bubbles rise from its mouth as they break and hear the breath of words. A talking fish. Come closer to hear the words. Something else glints from the bottom of the pool. That? Wait, is that a. That's like a crystal orb. I, don't, I think there's a bird in it. Mm. Kneeling beside the pool pond, you put your ear close to the water. A little scarlet fish swims up and spits a drop. Of water at your cheek. If fishes could laugh, you would swear this fish was chuckling. Again, it mouths bubbles. The, uh, sounds like werewolf. What does it mean? What? Okay. Taste the water? Sure. Uh, we just lost. Uh, found, uh, fascinating. Look deeper into the pond. Your eyes trace a second gleam. Not a, uh, but a gold piece. That's it? That's stupid. 
That's a spell. Oh, we can talk to the fish. We have a yellow wig? I don't think we do. Yeah. Nah. Even a green haired wig, we could. Protect from magic? Or you lost stamina. Treasure, toss a coin in there? Yeah, sure. Let's see what that does. This is not react. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna reload to when I didn't drink from the pool of water. Taste the water and the words. Cast a spell. Tell, maybe? Does that work? I know where we can get a green wig. No, oh, that's law. Maybe I can make him go get the coin for me or some crap like that? No. No tell. Maybe yap. How? Safe path? What? To where? It's fishing up a nest by. There's nothing to be afraid of. You can see your. Yeah, 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 yeah. This sucks. Alright, just wasted stamina and some time. Whatever. Ignore it. Power Uh. Just moving out. Just so can rob them. You follow the road down a gentle slope on the right. The cliff edge drops away with a view of the uh, fields of Lower Kare. Evening is drawn in a while, and you're in the market, and now the fields burn with scattered camp fire camps. After a while, you reach a fork in the road, heads lined with colored flags. The elbow of the fork is a well-kept steam pumps on the roof. A creature emerges, looking refreshed and uh, flourish. It's a bathhouse! Uh, we already have full stamina, so we don't need to. Here's where the... Move down here. This was a um carnival. Festival of Thieves or whatever. You head down the road, observe the fair. It's a fair, observe the fair. Enter. Organizer stuff. Yeah, enter the festival. Cabinet. Cabinet man? I just listened to Cabinet Man. The game's so rad. Or that uh, song is so rad. You roll up with your slaves and enter the festival. You're quickly elbowing your way through hordes of people, all jeering and subbing at the same half-drunk bottles of weed vine in your face. Oh, thanks. Uh, one stall seems to be running. A sign above the door reads, Cabinet of Fortune. Try your luck. A prize for all. Yeah, Cabinet of Fortune. Hello. That guy is a little weird alien in there. You go over to the tent, push back a flat inside. A grubby, bearded man leaps up from where he was sitting, cross-legged on the floor, and comes over to pump your hand. Uh, welcome, welcome, my friend. Uh, he has like a kind of eccentric. My friend, kind of. Anyway, he exclaims, somewhat over and yeah, over enthusiastically. And let's see what surprise you win today. You know. Or you must know this. There are no losers at Honest Tanner's Cabinet of Fortune. He gestures one hand to the large glass cabinet with a creature inside. And a snake head or whatever. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? It's a most simple game. Honest Anna replied. Honest Anna, really. You give me two gold pieces, and then my little pet will fetch something for you. He points inside the glass. With like a... Tapping my monitor. Because I imagine he tapped the glass and annoyed the creature. The creature probably hates him. Anyway. That's when you that's when you notice a small, weird, wiry creature curled up amongst a pile of jewelry, books, gold, and other things. Cast a spell. Wait, I, I don't have any gold. Crap! I really don't. Uh, you put on the skull cap, quickly cast a spell. Hannah watches you curiously, but is not alarmed. As you read his thoughts, you can see why. He is an honest he is honest as his name suggests, and it's not trying to trick you. The Captain of Fortune has some false prizes and some true ones, but it's not rigged. You're really honest. Anyway, with the skull cap on, you can hear another strange thought in the room. Listen, it's the creature. Uh, you reach out for the new thoughts. Uh, the thoughts are resentful, strong, and clear. A prisoner to my idiot boy, it says. I told Sans that any wizard would be able to protect himself when I get out of here. I'm really going to kill that miserable Norag. Or not. 
the light, yeah. These spots, evil, cold, and miserable, go around and around with no more clue as to where they're coming from. Uh, you remove the skull cap and sensation fades. A prayer for luck, Hannah remarks, unaware of your actions. Oh, good idea. And will you pay? <laughs> I have no gold. It's gonna tell me to leave. Oh, you don't? I suppose you spent it on a dancing girl. What? Next year, I'm going to uh, hit early and pitch my thing. I'm tired of being left on the outside. I want to pay! Damn it! I want to get some money. I gotta sell some crap. <laughs> Good. Oh, wait. Maybe I can do dud. Hmm. Nah. Can't do it again. Oh, God. Some good idea. Wait, what? Do you think so? Anasana looks at you with big, uh, fairly stupid eyes. I'll be honest with you, he whispers. This is in my stall. It was my father's along with that thing. He points at the creature looking in the glass. I don't know what it is, but I know it's hungry. He shivers. <laughs> Give it to me. Yep. Well, I could dispose of it for you. Yep. Hannah seems to consider that for a moment. He shakes his head. No, no thank you. But I couldn't. After all, it's all I could left with my father. He wasn't a bad man, you know. Just angered the terrible wizard Lorag. And suddenly he wasn't there anymore. There's this horrible creature hiding in his room, wearing his sli- at Oh my god. You're an idiot, good sir. <laughs> I think that's your father. Okay. You tell him softly. Hannah stares at you, then bursts in laughter. My father, that thing. Oh, that's good. That's very good. No, no, no. My father was a huge man. Thick, big beard. Nothing like that skinny wretch. No, no, no. My father was killed. But thank you for taking interest. He waves, gestures for the door. <laughs> good luck. You leave the hunt. Yeah, this idiot. Good lord. I just, I want to tell him that his his father was obviously turned into that little creature, but whatever, that's the joke. Rewind the look at the zoom look at the tent. Make a move, I want to look at the tents. No, 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 no. The fair... Uh, hmm. I bought something I shouldn't have... Maybe I just don't have that much money. Make him rewind from the... Ah, we'll go from there. Look at the tents. Because I know there's a way I can get... A uh, thing to talk to the fish. Here. A bear? What? Enter the tent and touch the ground. Alright. Anyway. A growling noise emerges from the tent. On the turret, you look inside. See a portly dwarf asleep in a chair in one corner, and his feet snoring heavily is a bear. The dwarf, you cannot help but notice, is a large bag of gold dangling from his belt. Cast a spell. We're gonna steal his gold. Cause whoa, whoa we can go back to the guy! Oh, I could use that on him. Uh. Just, oh, 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 oh. Trade? Trade? Nothing happens. What? You reach over and carefully pull loose the knot securing the pouch. The dwarf of um, the belt. It comes away so the dwarf himself. He His face slides one way and his belly to the other. It's a costume. Inside the costume. Underneath are little rods and levers for a weaver, the weaver to control. Look, is a mimite. You pe Oh, good. It's not Jan. Money. Okay, I was worried Jan had somehow followed us. That would be awful. Push further on, hands to hard and hilt. Keep going. Sorry, I, I'm just skipping through. This is just us moving through. It's not that interesting. Down. Take some pockets. Uh, you kneel down, one or another. Sleeping revelers. Pat down his pockets, of course. Someone is hard to am. I already didn't know. 
I gotta think. Uh, figures it. It's a city guard! Uh, pick an up pack it fast! No gold pieces. And a bone bracelet you get to take. Sweet. Guards are getting close. You get to your feet and rush away into the dark. You return to the fair. It's night, night. Now it's nighttime. You need to find somewhere to stay. Why don't I go over here? Or can I. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm gonna rewind to. Follow the flags. Ignore the guy's fair. Enter the fair. Yeah, we're gonna. The fair. Take the Midmite's money. Look at the tents. Somewhere it's midway. Ignore her. A bear. Tent. Take the bag. Take the money and run. I want the gold or the bone bracelet because that's gonna do. Actually, let's check what that does. Actually, let's see what the bone bracelet does. Uh. Okay. Stem or gold piece, beeswax, goblin tooth, bamboo flu, pile of blue, giant's tooth, potion, pebble, nose plugs, black face mask. Jewel of gold, black mirror, stone dust, wire, fire water, yellow powder, gale horn, oak sapling, brass pendulum, pearl ring, jewel medal, bracelet of bone. Okay, while wearing a bracelet of bone, the caster of the spell can translate a particular illusion, and this illusion will become real to others. However, affected creatures must be intelligent, and the caster must not counter, must not act to counter the illusion. Okay, so that's cool. Down, take some pockets, take a pocket fa bone bracelet. <laughs> oh, damn it, we can't do it, can we? I know we can get some items from him. Darn. Okay, well, is there a point in time where we had two gold? Sorry, I'm doing this one. Nine gold. What did we spend eight gold on? Oh, is fire. Right. Hmm. Okay, what do we spend 17 gold on? Or, you know what I'm talking about. Dwarves. Oh, the uh, gauntlets. Uh, now that we've gone this way, we've kind of... Hmm. Crap. Well, we don't get gauntlets. Sorry, everyone. Sorry this is taking so long, but I want to... I want... I know we can get some stuff. Okay, we can get some good stuff. Potion of Mystery, Precision, Honeycomb, buy, buy the dust, and then we'll leave. Buy nothing else. Continue. Walk on. Don't be racist to the snakes. Firemaster. The market. Again, I'm sorry, this is taking so long, but I wanted. I know we can do so much stuff. What the hell was that? That was weird. Down the market to the firemaster. Let me buy a fire. How do they work? Show me. Oh, wait, I don't care. Remember. Hey, back. Eat the hut. Buy a small flame. Buy it. Ask him about uh, North Gate. There's no imperative. I don't spell lines. What happened to them? Is there a way to find them? Okay! Continue below the dome. Cast how. Once again, I am terribly sorry, everyone, but we are getting all these awesome items from the guy and then the bracelet. This is all worth it, I assure you. Leave the market, 
drink from the fountain. This is where the episode began. Now we're gonna speed run. Okay, so we went right. We went right. We got talked to by a monk. Greetings. Take his hands. Who are you? Points to the fact he doesn't have a tongue. Along the cliff. Ignore the fish. Ignore it. Continue. Now we can talk to the guy and go to the whatever that is. Bathhouse. I don't care. It's a fair. Observe the fair. Enter the festival. Go into the cabinet man store. What do I do? Cast a spell. The spell being tell. Just like Undertale. You see how fast this game is if you don't read the dialogue? Okay. Pay him! What now? Shout something! Lorang, maybe? Squeals. Okay, you gotta make him angry. And he's really mad at Lorag. Hannah. Take my prize. Uh, bracelet of bone of knuckle bones. A good prize. The grimace is back into ten. Okay. Okay, I wonder if we can let, let, let's test this out. Sorry, but uh what I do Cast a spell, spell being tell. And then we gotta go steal the money from the Minmite and then steal the bone bracelet from the lady. Minds. Listen. Okay. Pay him. What now? Shout. Okay, what do you say? Sansis. Freedom? Lorag. Oh, it's the same thing. Whatever. So what did I just get? Or other items. Fire of danger? Yeah, that's interesting. Is that a magic item? Bracelet of bone? Wait, what? Wait, did we get the bracelet of bone from him? So do, uh, do we just have two phrases of bones if we go rob the lady? Because I'm going to go rob the lady. Ignore her. Go to the tent. Steal the money. Take the money and run. Keep going. Look down. Excuse me, sorry. Pick some pockets. Keep picking some pockets. Oh, three gold pieces, because I already had the thing. That's what I got from there. So, whatever. That was worth it. <laughs> now, yeah, I know that was a lot of trouble for an item, but you know, the spells can be very useful. It is called sorcery, after all. Now, Thank you for watching. Good vinyl.